Now we will ask, how old were you the first time you experienced homelessness? And so if they give an age, you'll type that in, or if they decline to answer or don't know, you can select those as well. Then we'll ask, in total, how much time have you experienced homelessness over the past year or the last 12 months? And this response doesn't need to be exact. So if they answer, then you'll put in the number of days, weeks, or months. And just remember, this is within the last 12 months. So we don't want to see months more than 12 or um, weeks or days that just don't make sense. So just make sure to take that into consideration. And next we'll ask, have you stayed in a homeless shelter in the past year? For example, Youth Haven, Salvation Army, Bayside Mission, or the Rosewood? And did you come to Canada as an immigrant, refugee, or a refugee claimant? And if they say yes, then you'll continue to ask, how long have you been in Canada? And if they give an answer, then you'll type it in in the days, weeks, months, or years, or they might give you the exact date that they moved to Canada, so you can type that in as well. And the next question, how long have you been in Simcoe County? So they might give a length of time. They might say they've always been here. And if they give a length of time, so you'll put that in in days, weeks, months, or years. And then you'll be continued to ask, where did you live before you came here? And so if they give an answer that is within Simcoe County, just double check to see if maybe they've just always been here, just um, to double check on that. And do you identify as Indigenous or do you have Indigenous ancestry? And so then you'll check off the appropriate response. Now, in addition to your response in the question above, do you identify with any of the racial identities listed below? And so you might read these out um, just because you want to maintain that six feet distance. So you might not be able to show the respondent. So you might say, Arab, uh, Asian East, Asian Southeast, Asian South or Indo-Caribbean, Asian West, Black Canadian or African, Black American, Black Afro-Caribbean, or uh, Latin American, White, you might identify as Indigenous only, and there's also, if it's not listed, you can type it in there. Now the next question, have you ever served in the Canadian military or RCMP? As a child or youth, were you ever in foster care or in a group home? And this question applies specifically to child welfare programs. Do you identify as having any of the following health challenges at this time, such as an illness or medical condition, a physical limitation, learning or cognitive limitations, mental health issues, substance use issues? And then we'll ask, what gender do you identify with? And again, it might not be uh, safe to show the list just because we want to maintain that six feet distance. So you can read off the options. So uh, some people might identify as male, female, two-spirited, trans women, trans male, um, non-binary, or they might say don't know or decline. And if they give a response that's not listed, you can type it in there. Now, how do you describe your sexual orientation? For example, straight, gay, lesbian. And again, you can either show the list or read it off to the participant. And again, there is the not listed option that you can type in the response. Now for question 14, what happened that caused you to lose your housing most recently? 
This question, we're not going to read the options and you will check all that apply. And so housing doesn't uh, include temporary arrangements such as couch surfing or shelter stays. And be sure to follow up for the reason if the respondent says an eviction or they chose to leave. So you'll want to become familiar with these options just so that way when a respondent is answering to you, you're able to check them off as they're talking. And you'll note that there are text box. So if they say conflict with someone other than a parent or guardian or a spouse or partner, you'll want to type that in. And if they experienced abuse by someone other than a parent or um, guardian or a spouse or partner, you'll type that in as well. And again, with our checkboxing, we want to make sure that we're not um, clicking off things that contradict each other because then for analysis purposes, we won't be able to include that response. So what is your most recent housing loss related to the COVID-19 pandemic? How long ago did that happen that you lost your housing most recently? So if they give a length of time, days, weeks, months, or years, you'll just type that in. And then what are your sources of income? And if the respondent seems hesitant to answer this, just remind them that it is anonymous and, um, and to give a response. Um, and also if they're just not comfortable, they might say don't know or decline and that's okay too. Okay, so we're getting a message prompt. So we'll just scan through quickly to see what we're missing. Okay, so for here, we forgot to give an answer. Uh, so because we clicked off not listed, we need to type in a response. So we'll just unclick that. So now we're at our local questions. So how many different friends or family members places have you temporarily stayed in the last year because you didn't have a place of your own? So we'll check off our answer. Do you identifying as having any of the following such as a brain injury, an intellectual disability or autism? And how has the COVID-19 pandemic impacted you? And again, this is a check all apply. So you'll read these off. Um, increase access to community services, decrease access to community services, increase access to health services, decrease access to health services, difficulty accessing vaccinations, limitations due to vaccination policies, maybe it caused the homelessness, or if you don't know or decline, as well as if you type in an other response. Now, what community do you currently live in? And if they say another place in Simcoe County, you can type that in. If they say another place outside of Simcoe County, now you've got another box to type that in. And if appropriate housing was available, what community would you want to live in? So we'll check off um, whatever place that they say. And again, making sure if we click off two answers and they conflict, we remember to unclick. So this is the end of the survey. So we're going to thank them for participating in the survey. And now um, we're getting our prompt. So it's just asking us, um, once we click finish, our response will be submitted. You can always use the back arrow if you feel like you need to double check anything. And if you have any technical issues, just remember email victoria.chapman at simco.ca and you can reference the survey number specifically if there's any problems. So now we're taken to the page. So thank you for completing the survey. Your answers have been recorded 
And because this participant did screen in to participate in the survey based on our screening C and C1, we're going to continue on to the gift card tracking form. And if you were filling out the paper survey, you would um, put aside the paper survey that you just filled out, and then you're going to pick up an envelope that has the follow-up survey in it because this survey is not anonymous. So we want to make sure that those responses stay securely sealed in the envelope once they're completed for, to make sure that we're maintaining confidentiality for the participant. So this is our follow-up survey. So we're going to fill in the region that we are surveying and then we're just going to read to the respondent the County of Simcoe would like to collect some information from you to connect you with services and supports related to housing. This information will be kept confidential and stored separately from the previous survey you completed, so your responses will not be connected, and the information collected will only be shared with staff essential to the follow-up process. And so we'll ask, are you willing to provide your contact information so that an enumeration may follow up with you. So if they say yes, then we will collect some information from them. But if they say no, then we're going to go to the gift card tracking form. So again, if you're doing a paper survey, if they say no to follow up, that's okay. And then you'll grab the gift card tracking form. And so this is where you will um, give the gift card to the participant. But first, um, you're just going to fill this out. So if the gift card was given to the participant, you'll say yes. And then you'll write down the gift card number. So that's the number on the back of the gift card. And each um, online survey has its own um, survey number. So those are linked. But if you're using the paper survey, then on the gift card tracking form, you're going to have to write in the survey number that you completed that is associated with the gift card. Um, so you might not give the gift card directly to the participant. If you're completing it over the phone, you might set it aside. So you'll just write down that gift card number and that's okay. And then also if you are, um, a volunteer from 211 who's completing surveys, uh, because you don't interact with the clients, then you'll ask the participant, do you give permission for your first and last name to be shared with an agency for you to pick up your gift card? And so if they say yes, then you will uh, ask them which agency would they like their gift card to be picked up at and if they say none of the above, then you'll continue to ask, how would you like to receive your gift card? And you can fill that out. And just like if they say no, then again, you'll ask them, how would you like to receive your gift card? So that is the gift card tracking form. But let's go back to the follow-up. So, if a participant says yes to follow up, then we will take down their first and last name. And we will ask them, are you currently working with an agency to find housing? So if they say yes, then, um, then that'll take you back to the gift card tracking form. But no, don't know, or decline to answer. Then we will ask, with, uh, is there a phone number and or email where someone can safely get in touch with you to refer you to services? So you can type in the phone number or the email, and then you'll ask if we can leave a message there. So if they say yes or no, don't know, or decline. And then on a regular day, where is it easiest to find you? And what time of day is easiest to do so? So you can type that all in. And then once you've completed the follow-up, then again to the gift card tracking. So um, 
yes, the gift card was given to the participant and the gift card number. And now you are done.